going to start examining other ways to solve systems where we don't have to draw pictures, look at the graph, see if they're intersecting, if they are, where it's happening, those kinds of things. We want to move away from it. So looking at that first system of equations, we have it graphed. So far, that's all we know how to do. So looking at the picture, where is that solution? Where is the intersection occurring? So it's kind of open to interpretation because fractional units, they're both less than one, but where is it around? Is it around half a half? I mean, it kind of looks like it could be there. But still, maybe it looks like it's a little bit farther right on the x-axis. So maybe two-thirds a half. Okay, so the problem with graphing is we're not precise. Um, if it doesn't fall right on a grid, and it isn't very obvious. So the actual solution, I'm just going to tell you what it is. Two-thirds is the x-coordinate. So we got that one part. Three-sevenths is the y. I never would have gotten there trying numbers until um, we satisfied both of them at the same time. So graphing helps us picture the solution, but solving by graphing, though practical in many applications, is not always very fast, not always very accurate. So we need algebraic methods, algebraic ones, that can determine exact solutions. So we had an idea of what it was around, but we want to have exactly the solution to the system. So one non-graphical method for solving systems is known as the substitution method. So that's what we're going to use first. So x plus y is equal to 6, is our first line. x equals y plus 2 is the second. Substitution as like its name sounds, we take something and substitute it into another. So, I know that x is equivalent to uh, this expression, y plus 2. So, I'm going to go ahead and label these. First one, one. Second one, two. Just so we can talk about it later, you can come back to your notes and figure out what you did while you were solving. So, since I know x is equivalent to this whole expression, wherever I see an x up here, I can substitute in y plus 2. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take 2, substitute it into 1. That's what my notation here means. I'm taking the second equation, plugging it into the first. When I do that, what results? So I know x is equivalent to y plus 2, and I still have the rest of the equation left. So when we do that, what happens? Now I have an equation all in terms of just y, one variable. We can solve those. We've dealt with them. So we can go ahead and solve for the y-coordinate. First question is, do the parentheses on y plus 2 matter? It's just a 1 on on the front. We can get rid of those and combine our like terms. So I've got two y's. Constant 2, 6 on the other side. So we need to subtract 2 from both sides and divide. So we're looking at y is equal to 2. But are we done there? Have we solved the system? We figured out the y-coordinate, how I have to travel up and down to get to the intersection. But we don't know the x-coordinate, the left and the right. So how can we solve for that? I have the y, and I have two options to plug it back into. Which one is going to be the easiest? to solve for x. The second one, because it's already isolated, I know that x is y plus another 2. And I know what y is equivalent to. So since we know that x is equal to y plus 2, and y is equal to 2, what does that tell us? x has to be 4. So our solution, we have an x-coordinate and we have a y-coordinate, so we should report it as a point, because that's what it is. Our solution, or the intersection, intersection happens at the point 4, the x-coordinate comes first, the y second, 2. So we have that one solution to that system. If you want to give it set notation, we're talking about the set containing just that one point. Only one point will satisfy. So just to prove to you that it's actually true with the method that we have seen before, let's go ahead and graph both of these. 
just to kind of hone in on it. But again, we're trying to move away from looking at the pictures. So that first line, x plus y is equal to 6. Let's solve it for y so we can graph it. We need to subtract x from both sides. So we could graph the first line. And the second one, x equals y plus 2. I want y on its own, so I need to subtract 2 from both sides. So let's graph them and actually show another way to prove that, hey, this is a solution to the system. This is the point these two lines are intersecting. So the first one goes through 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From there, I move down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. Get out your straight edge so your picture will be prettier than mine. That was our first line. And the second one goes through 0, 2, and we move up 1 over 1. And they're intersecting. And what point is right here? The x coordinate, 1, 2, 3, 4 to get me there. And up, 1, 2. Which is what we solved for algebraically. So this is what we're used to, but this is what we want to move towards, because this isn't always going to be so accurate. In the next example, we're dealing with S and T. So let's just go ahead and discuss, once we have our solution, how do we report it? So if we don't have X and Y's, we go alphabetically. And S comes before T, so any solution is going to be in this form. Solution form. And again, I'm going to go ahead and label first one, one, second one, two. So when you come back, you can remember what you did. So we always kind of have an easier option to go with when we're solving by substitution. So looking at the different forms of these two, which is going to be the easiest to substitute into the other? So in one, I already have one of my variables isolated. So I want to sub one into two since I don't have to do any extra work to get one of those variables on their own. So what do we get out in that case? I know t is equivalent to this giant thing, so I'm plugging that into the second one. S isn't affected, but I need to subtract what I know t is equivalent to. So 1 minus 3s. And I know that's equal to 11. So in the case before, parentheses didn't matter. But do they here? Yes. We have to distribute the negative in to get rid of these parentheses. So we're looking at minus 1 plus 3s is equal to 11. We can combine like terms. I've got 4s's. And we want to solve for s. It's all in terms of one variable now, which is what we want. So if I add 1 to both sides, we're getting here. We want s on its own, so we need to divide by 4. So s is equal to 3. We figured out the first coordinate, but we still need to figure out the second. What t value is associated with 3 for s? So we can plug it back into either one of these equations to figure out the t value. Which one is going to be the easiest? The first, since t is already isolated. So since t is equal to 1 minus 3s, t is equal to 1. 1 minus 3 times 3, 1 minus 9, which is negative 8. So what solution do we have? We know the solution form comes with s first, t second. So our solution, where these two lines are intersecting, is at the point 3 minus 8. And we'll give it some set notation. So this is just the set of all the solutions, and we only have one point that makes it true. So we satisfy both of those at the exact same time. But say you think you made a mistake. You weren't so confident with 3 and minus 8. How could you double check to make sure that that actually is a solution? We could take these, plug them back into both, make sure we're satisfying that it's actually true, both of them at the exact same time. We always have checks in math to fall back on, which is nice. So go ahead and work on the next two. Solve those by substitution. Don't graph them. Try to move away from the pictures.
So the first one, what was the easiest to substitute in? Second one into the first will get me there since I know x is equivalent to y plus 1. Wherever I see x up here, I can substitute in y plus 1. Now everything is in terms of y, which we are able to solve for. Do the parentheses matter on that first term? Nope, because there's only a 1 out on the front, so we can combine our like terms. Drop in the parentheses. I'm solving for y, so I need to subtract 1 from both sides. And we got that y was 2. But did you finish there? No, we still had a little bit left to go. So which one do I want to plug y equals 2 back into to solve for x? Second one is going to be the easiest since I know x is equal to y plus 1. And y is equal to 2. x is what value? 3. So our solution set, where these guys are intersecting is at the point 3, 2. And again, if you're not convinced, plug 3, 2 back into both of these. Verify that it makes both of them true at the same time. All right, second one, A and B is. So the A's are going to come first, B's will be second. What's the easiest to sub in? 2 into 1. Since B is already isolated, again, wherever I see a B up top, I can substitute in 2 minus A. So let's see what we get. A minus what I know B is equivalent to is equal to 4. Parentheses matter here. We have to distribute to get rid of them. Combine a like terms. And then it's an equation that we've seen before. We want to add 2 to both sides. 2A is equal to 6. So A was equal to what value? 3. But again, not quite done. We still need the B component. Easiest one to plug it back into, right there. Since B is equal to 2 minus A, B is what? Negative 1. So our solution set to this problem, A comes first. They intersect at the point 3 minus 1. How are these next two different than what we've seen so far? In either case, I don't have a variable that's isolated. So it's not exactly so obvious what to substitute, but there usually, again, is an easiest choice. So in that first example, what equation is going to be the easiest to solve and for what variable? So if I want to isolate a variable and have a 1 out on the front, which one's going to be the easiest? First one, solve 1 for what variable? X, since it's already has a 1 on on the front. That'll be the easiest case. So an equivalent system is looking like what? If I solve the first one for x, what do I need to do? Add 2y to both sides, and we're done. So we could look at this new system. Equivalent is just a different form than what we've seen of the first equation and the second one. So now that one of our variables is isolated, we want to substitute what? This one into there. So since I know x is equivalent to 2y plus 6, wherever I see an x, I'm plugging in that value. So 3 times what I know x is equal to plus 2y equals 4. All in terms of one variable now, which is what we want. So let's start solid. To get rid of the parentheses, we have to distribute 3 to each. So 3 times 2 will give me 6y plus 18 plus 2y equals 4. And if we combine our like terms, how many factors of y do I have? I've got 8 of those. 8y, 18 is 4. We're trying to solve for y, so what do we want to do next? So we're looking at minus 14. We want y on its own, so we want to divide both sides by 8. So y is minus 14 eighths. But can we simplify that at all? Is there anything in common between 8 and 14 that we can take out of both? They're both even, so we could take out a 2. So what is it equivalent to? Negative 7 over 4. But again, we've only figured out the y-coordinate. We also need the x-coordinate. 
So we have, what, four different options. Well, I guess these are the same. Three different options to plug y equals negative 7 fourths back into to solve for x. Which one is going to be the easiest to substitute back into? This one, since x is already isolated. x is equal to 2y plus 6. And I know y is equal to negative 7 fourths. So, let's start simplifying. We want a nice form for x. 2 goes into 4 how many times? 2. So, I'm looking at negative 7 halves plus 6. We need common denominators to be able to combine those together. So, how do we get there? 2 turns 6 into an equivalent number with a denominator of 2. We have to multiply by 2 over 2. So I'm looking at negative 7 halves plus 12 halves. How many do we have in the end? X is 5 halves. So our solution set, they cross at one point. X comes first, 5 halves. Y comes second, negative 7 fourths. So that picture, if we were to graph it, would be hard to pluck off the values of the intersection. We need another way. And if you're still not confident with that answer, to double check, make sure that it is a solution, what can we do? Plug it back into the original system, make sure that it satisfies both equations at the same time. So go ahead and take that second one and solve the system. Tell me where they are intersecting. So the easiest one to solve for, again, was what? First equation for x. So if I solve the first equation for x, an equivalent form is going to be what? x is equal to 8 plus 2y. So now that x is isolated, I know it's equivalent to this expression. We can plug it into the second. So wherever I see x, I am writing in its equivalent form. Everything is in terms of one variable. We need to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we've got 16 for y, and another y is 8. So I've got 5 factors of y. What has to happen next? I want y in its own. We need to subtract 16 from both sides. Divide by 5. And can we simplify that at all? One's even and one's odd. So no, in that case, they don't share anything in common that we could take out. But we just solved for the y. We also need the x. Plugging it back into this one is going to be the easiest. So x is equal to 8 plus 2 times what I know y is equal to. So we want a nicer form than this expression. So let's simplify. 2 times a minus 8 will give me minus 16 fifths. To get a common denominator, we have to multiply by 5 over 5 over here. So we're looking at 40 fifths minus 16 fifths. In the end, how many factors of one-fifth do we have? 24 of them. So our solution set contains the point 24 fifths minus 8 fifths. Again, a hard picture to graph and then pluck off the intersection point. But again, if you're not convinced, plug it back into the original system. Make sure that that point satisfies both of them at the same time.